Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Call of Duty story. Now, normally when I do these videos, we discuss one of two things. One of the two major series in the Call of Duty franchise. On one side, we have Modern Warfare, and on the other side, we have Black Ops. And generally speaking, when I do these videos, we talk about one of the main characters and one of the good guys, the protagonists in the game, whether that be Frank Woods on the Black Ops side, or Captain Price, or someone else on the Modern Warfare side. However, last week, I dove into a one-off Call of Duty game, that being Call of Duty World War II, and we looked at the backstory of the main character of that game, named Red Daniels, and he has a pretty harrowing story in that game. But it's not always the good guys who steal the show in a Call of Duty game. And a perfect example of that is the story of Jonathan Irons from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. He was not the protagonist, he was not the main character, he wasn't even your sidekick in that game, he was actually the bad guy, the antagonist of the game. So today, I present to you the full story of Jonathan Irons and they'll follow and that's where i come in as far as the background of jonathan irons at one point he served in the united states army and he trained at the west point graduate program after which he left the military service, Irons founded the Atlas Corporation in the year 2035 and eventually founded Atlas International, a worldwide company, in the year 2043, which eventually became the world's largest private military corporation. Now, up until the start of Advanced Warfare, Jonathan Irons' idea was to create new things for the military, such as exoskeletons that could help soldiers essentially become super soldiers, and in doing so, basically make a buttload of money. But that is until the start of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, where his son, Will Irons, actually goes on a mission with an exoskeleton, and things don't go according to plan. You gotta go now! Mitchell, we're out of time! You gotta jump now! It's okay. See you on the other side. Now here's the thing, Will Irons does not make it out of that first mission alive. And after you press F to pay your respects, and creating one of the biggest internet memes ever, you then get to finally meet Jonathan Irons, who says that his son's death was not necessary. And this is where we get to see the mental breakdown of Jonathan Irons going from someone who makes a lot of money to wanting to solve the world's problems. If you ever need an excuse me, Private Mitchell, I'm Jonathan Irons. I'm Will's father. Mr. Irons, I'm sorry for your loss, sir. I'm sure you are, Sergeant. Private Mitchell, you were Will's best friend. You both paid too high a price for your country. It was an unfortunate tragedy, sir. It was more than unfortunate, Sergeant. It was unnecessary. Son, I want to offer you a second chance. Mr. Irons, Mitchell's been discharged with his injuries. I'm aware of his injuries, Sergeant. At Atlas, we have prosthetics that are 20 years beyond anything the military could offer you. Will told me what kind of soldier you were. You deserve to fight for a military that's as effective as you are. Think about it. Don't let Will's death be in vain. Sergeant. Now, Irons decides to give Mitchell, Will's best friend, a second chance by giving him a prosthetic limb with the use of exoskeletons, he could once again become the soldier that he was before. Now, in this next mission, you are actually in a simulation in one of the coolest simulation labs you ever see in a Call of Duty game. Now, you fail the mission, you do not protect the president, but you then get to have an interesting conversation with Jonathan Irons. It was his arm, sir. I knew it was too early. That arm's worth more to me than this entire facility. How's my boy doing? He's a work in progress. Well, keep working. This is a great soldier. It's a sad day indeed when the military has no use for good men like you. Jump in. I'll give you the tour. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Yep, that's the name of the game. Atlas has the single largest standing military in the world, but we answer to no country. Unlike the government, we don't keep secrets of our capabilities. 
We don't sell policy, we sell power. We are a superpower for hire. Now, in the first few missions of Advanced Warfare, you are tracking down terrorists known as the KVA, and specifically their leader known as Hades. Now, about halfway through the campaign, you go to Greece and you track down Hades and kill him, which is odd because you're only about halfway through the campaign. But Hades gives you some interesting information along with an interesting piece of data. ID is confirmed. Hades is EKIA. I send again. Hades is EKIA. <coughs> he knows. Irons knows. What does Irons know? Now, after Atlas takes out Hades, who performed the massive terrorist attacks four years earlier, Jonathan Irons takes this as a time to promote Atlas as a company and show how successful they can be over any individual country. ...was able to. Thank you, Wendy, but the real heroes of the day are the men and women of Atlas. I couldn't be prouder of what they accomplished out there this week. There are rumors that the UN will offer you a seat on the Security Council. Can a life in politics be far behind? Well, I like to get things done, so no. So what's next for Jonathan Irons? Now you may be wondering, what was on that USB stick that Hades gave them? Well, we actually get to find out that Irons knew about the terrorist attack that Hades performed and let it happen so that he could be the savior, come in and take out Hades and then be praised by the world. Oddly, this is very similar to the story of General Shepard from Modern Warfare 2. Like very similar, almost exactly to the point with the Zakaev airport attacks. It's actually strange how similar they actually are. Now, after you watch what's on the USB, Irons finds out and immediately takes you captive. Now he tries to come up with some excuses for what you saw, but that doesn't go over very well and you narrowly manage to escape. And when you do so, Irons disables all of your electronics. Your hand stops working, your exoskeleton stops working, and your entire HUD goes basically AWOL. Now once you escape, your sergeant from the beginning of the game before Will died takes over as the Sentinels, and you join the Sentinels with your new objective is to take down Atlas and to take down Jonathan Iron. Now in your first mission with the Sentinels, you actually invade Jonathan's Irons compound and find out about a new biological weapon known as the manticore it's a biological weapon that you end up tracking down and taking down over antarctica now upon doing some more research into this you find out that the manticore is actually a biological weapon that would be used to kill everyone in the world that does not have an atlas dna implantation in their body basically it would be a way that atlas could make a monopoly on essentially human beings as a whole now the sentinels reveal this to the world but jonathan irons has another plan an ultimatum if you will i am honored to be the first ceo of a private corporation to become a member of the united nations security council unfortunately my appearance today has been clouded by a flurry of speculation that my company is developing a weapon of mass destruction which would be capable of targeting specific ethnic groups i want to address these allegations head on are we developing such a weapon? No, we are not. Because we've already developed it. But with all due respect, the United Nations is a relic from a different time when nations were unique in their ability to solve the world's problems. But that just isn't the case anymore. Primarily because you have outsourced the job to me. I have sent people to die in your wars. So I feel uniquely qualified to tell you, your wars don't work. Which is why my priorities have changed from profits to policy. Because politicians don't know how to solve problems. But I do. 
So let's be clear. I am here to solve the world's problems. And I believe the world's problems begin with you. So the Sentinels decide to go and attack one of Jonathan Iron's base, where they believe that he is. And this one is in New Baghdad. And the Sentinels go there, but one, upon getting there, Jonathan Irons has other plans. He releases the Manticore and kills all of the attacking soldiers, except for the core of the Sentinels, the four soldiers that you arrive with. The reason why they don't die is because they previously worked for Atlas and they all have the DNA implantation, which means they can't be killed by the Manticore. Now, later on in the mission, you were all taken captive by Jonathan Irons, and first of all, Jonathan Irons shoots Cormac, and then gives you a little bit of a speech and tells you what he thinks of your new arm. Of course, the tragedy is, dying for what you believe in doesn't make it true. You're not young, but you are strong, Cormac, so I give you 20 minutes to bleed out. Time enough to consider whether it was all worth it. And the prodigal son returns. I believed in you. I gave you a second chance. <laughs> You're nothing like Will. Now, after this, you and the crew manage to escape from captivity, but unfortunately, by the end of the mission, Cormac doesn't end up making it out alive. Now, Jonathan Irons does end up escaping New Baghdad, but you know where he's going. He's going to the Atlas home base. So you track him down and end up arriving there just in time for him to disable your exosuits and basically have you in his captivity. Necessary. The attack on America, unleashing Manticore, killing thousands of innocent people. I'm saving the world from itself. When there's no one left to challenge Atlas, there will be no more wars. There had to be sacrifices along the way. Yeah, twisted fucks throughout history have used the same argument. I don't know who stopped the launch. They'll bring this entire building down on top of you. I could have killed you in the prison camp. I could kill you now. But I won't. I'm not a monster. Mitchell, try to hit the release on your exo. Now, to me, it'll never make any sense why he didn't just shoot you there. He shot Cormac, so why not shoot you? It doesn't really make any sense with his character, but he says he's not a monster. But after you escape your exosuit, you then track down Jonathan Irons, chase him all the way to the top of the building, and this is what happens at the end. Mitchell, pull me up. I'm not letting go, so you've got to pull me up. There's only two choices. You either pull me up, or this whole building goes down and we go down with it. Mitchell! What are you doing? What are you doing? Mitchell! I gave you that arm! Mitchell! I gave you a second chance! And the arm that Irons created for Mitchell ends up being Iron's downfall. A fitting ending for what, in my opinion, is one of the best bad guys of all time in any of the Call of Duty games. Right up there with Raul Menendez and Vladimir Makarov. 
But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Jonathan Irons. An interesting one. A character who is in one Call of Duty game, but had a big impact in a big way. One of the biggest bad guys of all time in the Call of Duty games. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. It really helps out that channel. And let me know down in the comments any other characters you'd like to see me cover next. But as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. And that's where I come in. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we